Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about how, not why, but how we know electrons can reside at set energy levels, okay? Um, so basically, what's all this stuff about quantized energy, right? So first of all, we need to realize that, remind ourselves, what it is to be quantized energy? Quantized energy means the electrons can be at one amount of energy or another. They have these very discrete or very set amounts of energy they're allowed to be at, but they can't be anywhere in between, okay? We call, out the, we call those quantums or quanta of energy, okay? So the way we know how, we need to observe something in our world. So what we do is we energize atoms. We send energy into them. And when we send energy in them, they glow, okay? And when those atoms glow, they glow and they release this light signature to us, okay? This is exactly like neon lighting or LED lighting or um, those kind of lighting that we get uh, in our houses. Uh, that's what we're seeing is we're seeing the glow from the different types of gases or electrons inside those energized bulbs, okay? We call that glowing light an atomic emission spectrum, otherwise known as a bright line spectrum, okay? And off to the right here, we see these different bright line spectrum. So every single element has their own signature, okay? But you don't get all kinds of light. You don't get a full rainbow of light. All you get is these really distinct bright lines. Sometimes, you know, down here, hundreds of them packed together, sometimes spread out all across the different visible spectrum, okay? So how do we get these? Well, we bombard an element with photons of energy. That can be electrons, it can be sunlight, it can be thermal energy. Somehow we give it a bunch of energy, okay? And those electrons are going to get excited, okay? And they make these bright lines. So the reason why we know that electrons have to be quantized is because they only form these bright lines, okay? If they didn't do that, we'd have a full rainbow of colors coming off, all right? So let's talk a little bit more about these bright line spectrums and how they're made, all right? So here's our step-by-step -step of how it kind of happens, okay? Uh, electrons start at their stable ground state orbital. An orbital is just kind of like an energy level for now. We'll get more detail about orbitals later. A source of energy enters the atom. That electron, they're there, they absorb this energy and they jump to a higher energy level, okay? So the jump is absorption of energy. That puts them in an excited state, which is extremely unstable for them. So they don't like being there, okay? So the second they land on their next energy level, the excited state, they don't want to be there. They immediately fall back down to a lower energy level, orbital, then they release that energy out, okay? So they jump up to absorb, and then they release and they fall back out, okay? Uh, when they release, it releases a lot of us into the visible light spectrum, okay? Um, and then that amount of energy that's released matches the energy level, okay? So, so because we only see these bright lines at very specific wavelengths, we have these very, very distinct lines, we know that the electrons can only exist at set quantum of energy, okay? So let me kind of show it to you also here uh, as we take a look at this, all right? So here's kind of a, a, a diagram of what goes on. So energy comes in, electron hanging out here in its ground state, you know, just doing fine. It absorbs this energy and it jumps up to an excited state, making it unstable. So it immediately falls back down. But when it falls back down, it has to release the energy it just absorbed. And it will release the energy into a very specific wavelength of light, which we see as a single line in a bright line spectrum. Okay. Now, it falls back down to its site. But if energy is still coming in, that energy is still there. That ele same electron or other electrons can absorb, and they can absorb a different amount it, as long as it's in the right amounts, okay? So it's, instead of absorbing, you know, just enough to get us a red line, maybe it absorbed enough to get up to here, which gives us a little more energy, and then it falls back down again. But this time it falls further to a different energy level, so it gives us a different line, okay? So you can see that it can absorb different amounts and fall different amounts, but it can never absorb enough energy to land somewhere in between these green lines. These green lines represent the orbital energy levels, okay? Um, so it can never fall in between here. It only can land here, 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 or here, okay? Which means it's at very set amounts of energy. Interesting thing, that same electron, if it jumps really far, it can actually fall down all the way or only part way. And then it can fall again. So it actually can land on the intermediate level. It doesn't have to always go back to the ground state. So you imagine an electron that's being absorbing energy 
falling down, absorbing, fall, absorb, fall, absorb, fall, absorb, fall, absorb, fall. And it has all these possible landing spots, but it has to be very specific. So what creates is very specific lines on our visible spectrum. Okay. Now take this and expand it out where you now have hundreds of possible orbital energy levels. Okay. We're not talking about seven levels that you learned in middle school. There are hundreds of possibilities for different atoms to have for energy levels. Okay. And you can have multiple electrons, right? You know, carbon has, you know, um, six electrons. Oxygen has eight electrons. You know, lead has 82 electrons. So think of lead. If we excite part, gaseous particles of lead, there's 82 different electrons that are jumping and falling on all these different possible energy levels, okay? So with that much movement of electrons, okay, we can get very specific or unique signatures for every element. Now, here's the cool thing. Many of these are not even in the visible range. So a lot of the times they fall down and jump in the UV, the infrared, the X-ray, the microwaves, uh, gamma, even up to gamma possibly, uh, radiation. We can see with our eyes the visible spectrum, but we have detectors that can detect for sure far into the infrared and far into the UV, if not further X-ray regions, okay? So even though we can't see all this, we have the ability to see a much broader spectrum using our technology than we can see for these eyes. But just seeing the visual is enough for us to, if you go back to our original slide, it's enough, even in the visual, for us to get a really good uh, signature of knowing which one is which between these two things, okay? So keep in mind, none of this would exist if electrons were not required to be at set amounts of energy. So this entire video, the whole kind of take-home message is electrons have to be at set amounts of energy, okay? Um, they can move between amounts, but they can't go anywhere they want to, all right? And how do we know it happens? How do we know this? Well, they make these wonderful bright line spectrums for us to see when we energize them. All right, that's it.